about pulling something apart. I believe it's about coming together. Thank you. So I'm going to finish up by saying, first of all, there's no bill for me to read, even though what I'm speaking against right now. There was a group of people in a continuum from apparently wanting to completely get rid of SBDM all the way down to a former parent who recognized the value of school-based decision-making in Kentucky. We need to remember why we ended up with school-based decision-making to begin with. In Kentucky years ago, superintendents wielded an awful lot of power. They placed an awful lot of people within the power of their community into well-paying, well-benefited jobs. We can say we're 30 years away from that. We're, we can say that Kentucky is fundamentally different than we were 30 years ago, but I think we have to be very honest with ourselves about answering that question. So school-based decision came about because we needed parents' voice, we needed teacher voice, especially in determining who the leadership of a school would be. And let me explain a little bit more about how that really happened. So when you're on an SBDM and you go to hire a new um, principal for a school, the candidate list is sent to you by the superintendent. The superintendent has a designee that serves on that panel. Guys, let's be real. Most SBDMs are gonna take that set of candidates, they're gonna look at all of them. They're going to have respect for the superintendent and the district that sent them those. And as long as they find a candidate that they feel like is great, most likely with the voice of that designee, they're going to hire that candidate. It, it, this is not the Wild West of, of education, folks. SBDM, if, if you would listen to the panel that was here before you, who apparently, again, it's, 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 I, I'm a little, it's a little unbelievable to me that it seems that getting rid of SBDM and parent and teacher voice is apparently on the table in this session. That's, that's very disturbing. So let's admit that that's what we're really talking about. But in regards to principal selection, you need to know that in reality, most SBDMs are going to select the candidate that is submitted to them because what most superintendents do is they send a list of a few and then the one they really want that is really a standout candidate. That's what happens most of the time. So for an SBDM who does have the power to go off of that list, they can do a nationwide search for a principal if they want. But realistically, most don't. So the reality is, is most superintendents are selecting principals. But as to why SBDM is powerful and why we still need it, I will agree with this panel. We need more parents. We need an equalization of parents. But what we also need is what we used to have when we first got SBDM, a public service campaign that helps parents understand the power they have in Kentucky schools. They don't know that. We don't put any money towards educating them of the power that they hold or that they could hold. And if I go to a school board meeting and I am very thankful for the folks that run for school board, if I am lucky, I am given five minutes at the end of a meeting as a parent. Before I came here this morning, I stopped by my elementary school and I signed my name, literally my signature on my school improvement plan that I had worked on for a month in a very data driven fashion so that my school doesn't end up as a TSI or a CSI. And don't even get me started on TSI and CSI. But let's also clarify one thing. Priority schools lost their SBDMs a long time ago. Priority schools don't have SBDMs. CSI schools don't have SBDMs. And TSI schools that are in TSI for three years will lose their SBDMs. So make no mistake, I kind of feel like as an SBDM parent and my voice, I'm already an endangered species. It is my hope that we will realize that in the state of Kentucky, school-based decision-making and funding is what has moved us from the bottom in this nation to right in the middle of the pack. And guys, we are very poor. We have very poor communities. We are very sick in Kentucky. And our children's parents are at the highest incarcerated rate in the nation. Our teachers and our schools and our SBDMs are working very, very hard and they're working with less than they've had. A decade of underfunding is where we have been. So you can listen to the failing school narrative that's painted about our schools. I'm getting a little tired of it. I don't know about you all, 
but I'm getting tired of it. Or we can talk about real solutions. And yes, let's put more parents on expedience. Let's educate them about the power that they can have, how they can be involved. Please, let's do that. And I'm thankful that there are parents that have risen up to be school board members and can have both of those perspectives, because that's incredibly powerful. That is where you get leadership in your community. And that is where you also get African American and people of color who can serve in their school levels, to serve in their school boards, to serve higher up in their communities. It is a pathway to leadership within the Commonwealth. So when you take away SBDM, be mindful you are also taking away the ability for empowered parent voices to become empowered leaders in their communities that then turn around and know exactly what needs to be done for their schools. Thank you for giving us time today. I wish I had a better understanding of what I was specifically speaking about, but I would encourage you that whenever you have a discussion about school-based councils, please always include KASD at the same time, because guys, it's, it's very easy to paint a, a failing school narrative when in reality we know that it's really our society that's failing. We gotta work on that. Ms. Waterbury, thank you for your comments and for all of you all here. Thank you for your roles in your communities. And please know, in the interim, it is a discussion time. None of us up here have anything before us either. This is a time we have dialogue and to listen. That's why we have both sides that come with us uh, for whatever the issue may be. So I, please. I just got confused because they good. mentioned the bill. No. Just, thank you. Oh. <laughs> no problem. I'm going to move to questions, and I think some of these questions came before you all, so I'm going to ask the other group if they're probably willing to take these questions. If some are for you all, we'll just make your way back to the table. But first up is Senator Merritt. 